Hi, so uh, today I'm going to show uh, the viewers how to take a squirrel cage HVAC blower fan and wire it into a four position rotary switch. Uh, this one thing I had difficulty finding on the internet or in YouTube was how to wire uh, this configuration so I can use all four uh, fan blower speeds. So I'll show you how to wire the switch. Uh, I'll put put in the comments section uh, where I purchased this switch. I got it on Amazon. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to build one of these fans into a frame to make you a nice portable uh, shop fan or something like that. So first steps, we're going to trim off the wires. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. All right, so I'm going to cut the connectors off each of these leads. I like to use these connectors for other things, so I generally cut off a couple of inches. So just standard wire stripping uh, pliers or tools. Uh, you can see I've already done the white one. So you do not cut the brown wires. Those generally attach to your capacitor. So make sure you don't uh, clip those off. Those need to remain as is, but everything else, I'm gonna give you, and I'll, again, I'll put it in the comments. Your white wire is always the line neutral, so that's gonna connect to your power source. Everything else uh, is one of the fan uh, blower speeds. Typically, your black is the fan high speed. Yellow is medium high. Uh, and then blue or brown, in this case I have blue, is medium low. And then red is low speed. So I'm gonna take some time, strip off the ends, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next steps. All right, I'm gonna show you how to use the wire strippers if you never use them. You just find the right gauge for the wire to fit in around the insulation, pull straight off at the end. And there we have, we have all four uh, removed. All right, so this is the rotary switch. I'm gonna show you how to wire. Uh, this is four position. Uh, got it on Amazon. Again, I'll send the link uh, in the video chat sections. It's, it says it's a bow main cam changeover switch, uh, rotary select switch. Pretty nice switch, pretty heavy duty. Uh, I've already got one wired up, but I'm gonna show you how to do this one here uh, in a moment. Find. Uh, this wiring uh, diagram is on the Amazon website, so I printed it out. It shows you uh, position zero. Let me take it out of the out of the case here. So, actually, the indicator is here. There's a notch. Position position zero is no power or uh, nothing energized. Position one, that's terminal one and two uh, connected and energized. Position two is terminals three and four connected and working. Position three is terminals five and six connected and working. And finally, position four, terminal seven and eight working. So I'm gonna use one, two, three, and four to be my low, medium, low, medium, high, and high on this four speed fan. And we'll get to the wiring here momentarily. So one thing I mentioned, I mentioned, I just went through the uh, various positions for the switch. Be very careful uh, if you purchase this switch or any other. There are a lot of small screws that come in the installation. We'll get to mounting the switch later, but right now I want to focus on the wiring. You should be able to see that uh, terminals one, three, five, and seven. There's a U shape, so the U shape points to the terminals. So this would be one, three, five, and seven. On the reverse side, we have four, two, eight, and six, right? And there's a little up arrow. You may not be able to see it too well, but that's the that's to orient the switch up. So again, all the way to the left until it stops is zero, meaning there's no power to the switch. So the next thing we need to do, we need to create some pigtails, what's called pigtails, to the powered side of the switch. And that's where we're gonna wire, uh, ultimately, our power cord. So. What I like to do, I'm, this is, uh, I believe this is 14 gauge uh, Romex, standard home electrical wiring um, wire. So definitely I wouldn't use anything smaller than 14. 14 or probably 12 might be even better. Uh, so we wanna take the conductors 
out of the sheathing and the insulation. We're not going to need that. And we won't need this paper part. Uh, the ground we probably won't use, but again, copper is expensive, so I like to hold on to every piece of copper I can. And now I'm just going to make uh, some leads to go into the switch. And we're going to need, um, essentially we'll need four plus a bridge and then another. So we're going to probably need uh, five wires, uh, five black wires. So I'm going to show you how to make one. I'm going to make the rest and then we'll come back. So cut, and then you want to strip off just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch of each end. So we got enough to get a contact, but not enough uh, to short out against each one. So there's one, one pigtail, two, and so on. So let me go ahead and fabricate the others, and then we'll come back to the video. All right, so I've created all my leads uh, for the black ones. I reckon you're going to need seven. That's what I've found works best. These are all about, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches long. You want them the same length, whatever those four are. And then we're going to connect um, each pair to another lead. And then this will go to uh, one final lead. I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. So uh, definitely need uh, six. And I think I use seven in my application. So seven black ones. And then, similarly, you need four white ones. So I got four, again, about the same length. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show, so I'm using, I mentioned the Romex, I'm using this 14-gauge uh, conductor. So if you can use, you know, I've got 14 or two, I wouldn't go any lower than 14. Uh, 12 would probably be better, given the number of amps coming through, but 14 should be fine for this application. So. Next thing I'm going to show you, you want to connect each of the small black leads to the odd sized posts. Um, and one thing you should also know, when, if you get this switch, the terminals come uh, torqued all the way down. You'll need a number one Phillips head screwdriver. Don't try a number two or you might strip out the uh, screw heads. So find a number one and you want to back each one of the eight terminals all the way out so counterclockwise until it's fully open and then what you'll do i'm going to show you i'm going to go into terminal one you slide your conductor in there hold it in you can see the, all the copper is no longer exposed and then you twist until it's fully down it needs to be really tight you might have to put a little pressure in there to get a good snug fit I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to hook all the other uh, seven leads, the short ones up. Remember, black black goes on the odd size, and then we're going to do white on the even side. All right, so we're back. I just want everyone to see I've got all four of the shortest black wires on the 1357 side of the switch, and then the white wires on the 2468 side of the switch. So the next thing we're going to do for the, the black side will be the hot side. So that's where with your power cord, you're going to eventually connect the black on the power cord to the full side of this switch. But to do that, it's kind of cumbersome to uh, get all these together. And I'm going to be putting all of this in a mounting in a, uh, in a, in a double gang box. It's called. I'll show that later because I'm going to build an enclosure for this fan. But again, as I said earlier, right now we're just looking to show how to wire the switch. So what I want to do, I want to take my medium-sized black wires and I'm going to start creating pigtails to the side of the switch. In theory, I guess you could have like four more, you know, you could make these longer, put them all together and possibly wire your switch that way. Again, it, it, it's it's more art than science uh, but what you'll need are some wire nuts so because I'm using 14 gauge wire uh, I should be able to get a good connection with my pigtail uh, with the 14 gauge wire using the yellow colored wire nut if you haven't used these before you just insert all three tips of the wire and you keep twisting eventually it'll catch as you can tell there and start twisting the wires and so now I've got one there. 
I'm going to do the same for the other black wires and then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, next step. I've got the two wires uh, connected and then a pigtail, what's called a pigtail, coming out of each one. Now I'm going to take these two, stick them together, and the reason this is easier, this makes the wiring with your power source a little easier uh, when we get to that in a moment. But I'm going to hook all these together. Again, insert all three wires equally. Keep twisting. It'll get really tight. That way you know you've got a good connection in there. And now I've got my single black wire coming out of the switch. So let's stop there and we'll go to the next step. All right, so we're back. Uh, next I'm gonna show you, so if you've got a power cord uh, lying around the house, maybe an old appliance that you're not using, you can certainly cut an end off of that. I would, again, I'd make sure that it's at least um, 14 gauge. I think 12 gauge is preferable. Uh, this is a 12 gauge. You can buy these at, uh, at, I bought this at Lowe's. I'm sure Home Depot probably sells them too. Uh, they were anywhere from 10 bucks to I think this one was 14. That's because this is a 10 foot cord and I wanted a, a long cord uh, for my application. So the other thing you're going to need, we, we've already used the yellow wire nuts. Uh, next you're going to need, um, I generally like the orange colored ones. That's like a medium small. It's not as small as the blue. I've got a blue one here. Um, but. Um, yeah, I, I like I like the uh, the orange ones for this. So remember what we said. Black is going to go to the black side of your power cord. So this is my power cord here, and I'm going to hook that up with the orange colored. I could probably actually even use a blue colored wire nut because this is 14 gauge. So I'm going to again get the tips together, push you now. Not sure I like that or not. It's not covering the conductor, so let's use, let's be safe. Use an orange one. Twist her all the way down. Okay. Now, your white is your neutral. White will go to the white coming out of your fan motor. Uh, this one we probably can use the blue because this is both uh, braided wire. So get them close together. Twist it all the way down until, it, to be safe, you just want to see the insulation. So there you go. We got black, so the one black pigtail on the 1357 part of the switch, and then we got white line neutral coming into uh, matching up with the power cord. All right, next up, uh, we're going to, you know, got to, got to make sure sometimes these connectors here might get a little loose, make sure they're tight. So now it's simply a matter of taking the four remaining wires from your motor and hooking them up to uh, the right order. If you remember, position zero of the switch, nothing happens. Uh, position terminal one, you want, uh, that's terminals one and two. And as we remember, the red wire is generally your low fan speed. And I want my position one to be low fan speed. So again, I'm going to connect to terminal two, the white wire to the red wire. And again, need a few of my smaller wire nuts, and there's a blue one. So to terminal two, we're gonna have the red side, or the, the red fan wire. And I'm gonna twist it really good so none of the copper's exposed. Okay, now yellow, you may recall, and I'd like to get my wires somewhat untangled, but I'm going to be taking this apart again before I build my fan box. Um, four is medium low or sort of low. Uh, I'm going to fold that over, get it about the same length again, uh, get to a blue. If I can find one, there we go. So yellow is going to connect to the uh, lead coming out of four 
And of course you could wire these straight into the switch if you wanted to. I just, for illustration purposes, and I think to fit in the box, the mounting box, I'm gonna put this switch in eventually. Just gonna make it a little easier. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Remember blue is medium high and position three is terminals five and six. So we wanna connect this to number six right here again. Again, since we stripped that insulation off, you generally want to twist first. I need to find me another small wire nut. There we go. They're all in the bottom. Isn't that interesting? Um, so, blue to terminal six. Twist. Get it down good and tight. And then lastly, number eight uh, corresponds to black coming out of the fan. So don't confuse this with the black from your power cord, different. And so we're gonna connect this one to terminal eight. And again, because we're not installing the uh, switch yet or anything, I'm just gonna put the cover, make sure the up arrow is at the top. Uh, it goes right over zero or position off. And you can just slide this on. Eventually when you mount this, there's a very tiny screw that goes in here and holds all this on. All right, so I'm going to go get power plugged up to this and show you that it works. All right, so we're back. Uh, fan spinning. I just had to test and make sure that it was powered up. Now, again, not the safest thing to do, handling the switch outside of not being mounted in a box again, but we're gonna put it in a box. So just make sure you're not touching anything metal. So it's off now, it's plugged in. I'm gonna to go to position one. There's one, two, hopefully it's not gonna fly off. Three, and there's five. And that's it. That's how you wire this uh, four position switch uh, to your fan. I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna build a uh, uh, enclosure for this and then we'll come back and talk about the parts. So thank you and uh, we'll see where we take it from there. All right, so one thing I did have to experiment with and uh, I've gotten it corrected. Uh, when you mess around with your switch, you might be able to determine the speeds by just listening. I had a few of the wires reversed to the switch, um, but now that I've got it, it uh, rewired in order. So uh, the two wire, red is the low, uh, the four post is blue or sometimes brown, that's medium low. Uh, the six, which is position three, is the yellow, that's medium high. And then the black uh, is always, at least in my experience, is always the high speed. So again, one, that's, Low, two is medium low, three is medium high, and then four is all the way high. And then zero is off. So again, I'm gonna take some time, work on building uh, some cabinet uh, things. I'm also gonna show you, you definitely wanna make a baffle for this. You don't want the opening to be fully open because uh, the, the fan to work efficiently needs to have uh, some blockage, at least half of that opening, um, the exhaust side, uh, needs to be closed off. Otherwise, the fan can overheat, uh, eventually burning up your motor, and you certainly don't want that. So I'll show you that uh, when we get to those pieces. All right, so uh, we talked about how to wire the switch to these four-way uh, blower motors. I have disconnected the uh, wiring from the uh, the the black, the hot wire, and then the, uh, the four fan speed motors. And I've mounted the switch on a, just a, a dual blank face plate. It requires you to drill out a hole, and then you can line up the holes for the mount of the switch, and then they, they just screw in like that. There's a cover plate that snaps off and snaps back in. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that in a bit, but here's you know, these come in different colors. You, uh, you could get a steel one if you wanted to, but then you're gonna be drilling through metal. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show, so let me take this down a moment. So I built a box out of one by threes and, and screwed that all together. 
I've mounted the fan, so this is the way it'll be oriented. You want the exhaust coming out the bottom. Um, I'm able to move it around because I have mounted on casters. So if I lift this up like that, you'll see the casters here. You can get those at Harbor Freight or any of the big box stores. This uh, I like these because they're they've got a urethane on them. They roll a little more smoothly. Uh, I think Harbor Freight they cost about five bucks a piece uh, regular price. And again, you'll have to drill some holes through the metal on your mounting flange. You want to make sure you've got that screwed into the wood frame. And of course, I've already cut the plywood base to mount the casters on. So let's swing this around. Next thing I want to show so. I've mounted the wires coming from the fan. I used a knockout hole in the back. I had to uh, screw on a little block of wood inside the frame and get my depth right because I want the edge of this box to be even with the back panel of plywood. I'll show you that in a moment. But here's what just the regular box looks like. I think it was like under $4 at Home Depot. And then you definitely want to use, uh, you'll have to get these. They're, um, cable clamps you want to make sure your wires once they're in there you, you what you do is you knock out the hole you put the uh, put this part on the outside of the box make sure you turn it around so you have access to these clamp uh, screws put it up through the box take this little lock washer oops I dropped it there we go take the lock washer spin it on and then tighten it down inside the box and you're good to go and you'll need two of those uh, the other one I've got one mounted in the bottom that's where our power supply cable will go up through the box um, I'm debating how I'm going to route the cable I'm probably going to drill a slight maybe half a hole in this outside uh, here so the cable will have a, a bit of way to pass through before I put on the um, the back plywood and as you can tell I've measured off to see where I need to cut this inside piece out with my jigsaw and then I'm going to mount this on here and countersink the screws for the back and then we'll talk about what we're going to do for the, uh, the fan entry points as well as the exhaust so uh, we'll come back after I get all that done okay so since we last met I've now cut the hole in the back. I've countersunk uh, some, uh, so my screw heads won't stick out. I just like the finish of that. And what I wanted to show you a couple things. So, as you can tell, here's the power supply line coming up through the box. I've clamped it down hard. I stripped back enough of the outer insulation so I got room to push these wires in. Uh, we haven't talked about a ground wire, so because this fan doesn't have a, a ground to it, I'm just going to curl this around and uh, affix it to that screw up there in the corner. Then I'm going to take the white uh, neutral wire, connect to the white neutral from the fan. Then I'll connect the black to the jumper wire from all of the black uh, uh, wires that we wired on the switch. Uh, with that pigtail. This one happens to be white, but it's all it's all the black side. It's the one, three, five, and sevens. And then I'm going to wire up the two, four, six, and eight sides to the low, medium, low, medium, high, and high settings um, after I get this panel back on. I just drilled a hole. I don't know if you can see it. I simply drilled a hole in the back panel to accommodate the power cable, threaded it through, up through the hole, and uh, I'll get this all buttoned up and then uh, we'll show what the back side looks like and then I have a, a few other things to show. All right, so uh, that took me a little longer to wire up than I thought because the wires, uh, I was limited on fan wires. I really had to stretch them out, but uh, I'm going to show you. I got the switch hooked up, so position one, low, medium low. medium-high, high. This is the way we wanted that. So, a um, couple of things. I should have shown, I showed you the box inside, and I mounted the box in, but you definitely want to get one of these if you use this type of box. It's called a mud ring, and after you get your box mounted and your wires in, you want to 
hook this in over the two and make sure your two screw holes are at the bot top and the bottom. That way you can uh, mount your cover plate on and gives it a nice finish. And then I'll just show you what I was uh, struggling with to wire up the switch. As you can see, the way my fan's mounted, I didn't have many wires to play with, so I only had about that much to work with in the box. Made it a little tight, but uh, I changed out some of the wire nuts and uh, traded the red ones for the uh, smaller yellow ones that seemed to work better. Gave me more space in the box. Last thing I need to show you, so this is my uh, fan capacitor. I'm going to mount that um, probably underneath uh, someplace on the frame so that it won't interfere with the uh, plywood top I'm going to put on uh, cut and put on top but uh, again I'll show you that later I'm probably just going to get a um, um, one of those hose clamps that'll fit around this because I, I don't have a place to attach it to the fan itself and I don't want it rattling around and I want it to be stable so uh, we'll check back here in a later I'm going to I've got some hardware cloth and I'm going to cut to fit the uh, the inlet openings and then on the front and I'll cut a, uh, a piece of plywood to fit on the top and screw in and we're almost done. All right so we I finally have the box assembled and the frame around my blower fan want to show you a few things so motor side I just used um, I believe this is half inch Hardware cloth available at big box stores in a roll for maybe twelve or fourteen dollars. Definitely want to have that so heat can uh, dissipate from the motor side. Uh, let's turn it around. Talked about got the four-speed switch in that box. I showed everyone how to wire that up. Now, this is the other side of the blower fan. These types of fans, particularly the newer ones are intended to operate with some static pressure. So think of that mounted in an HVAC system, blowing against vents, sucking air in against the resistance that a air filter provides. So you don't wanna have this uh, open very much. You need some air to come through. I'll explain how we measure this, but this is just regular pegboard. Let me get a scrap here. Um, I picked up a two foot by four foot sheet of this at Lowe's yesterday cost me about 12 bucks. It's going to help me with a couple of other blower fans I'm going to make. And then on the front, you'll see I've restricted the opening probably about a half. And you may be wondering, well, hey, how did you do that? Well, if you can possibly get to your fan label, and I don't know if you can see it here. I'll try to tilt it back. There's a label on your fan, and it will tell you the amperage rating, the voltage, and also your capacitor resistance. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But one thing I want to tell you, I, it took me a while uh, to figure this out. I was like, I don't know why I can't get uh, good amperage readings. And it turns out that this particular motor has an external capacitor. Remember we talked about, uh, talked about the capacitor. Hopefully you can see that there. Uh, we mounted it in here. I had the terminals, uh, obviously I didn't have it wired right, so if, when you look on this, there'll be two sides if it's a, you know, just a single capacitor. There'll be two poles to that capacitor. You need to make sure the leads coming from the motor, there's one hooked up to each side of the capacitor. It doesn't matter, oops, it doesn't matter which side you hook up, but you got to make sure that they're opposite one another, and that was the problem. How did I know that? Well, I'm going to show you. I have this device here. It's used it in an old science project with my kids years ago, but it's called kilowatt. And if I set it on amps, it'll show the amp draw at each speed of the motor. motor. So if I turn on this one, it'll kick in a little high and then it starts dropping. So we're down to under three amps. This is a five, five amp rated motor. So we're consistently at 268. If I go to my medium low, it's just going to pull. See there? I don't know if you can read that, but that's 3.28 amps. I go to medium high. 
is just shy of four, so three, nine, four, and then all the way to high. We're right there. We're a little over uh, five amps, so I'm probably not going to run this uh, in my application on the high setting because I don't want to burn up the motor. You, you definitely don't want the amper pulling more amperage than the motor's rated for, or you're probably going to burn it up. Now, the other thing I did, I cut this piece of plywood. And I hooked up my, and if you have a multimeter that'll, with a clamp-on amp meter, you can do the same thing. But I, I moved this, this piece of plywood up and down until I got amperage below the rating for the motor. And that's how I determined how to restrict the, uh, the airflow. And I'm telling you, this is blowing pr plenty of air. You shouldn't need to turn it on uh, higher than medium high. So... That's it in a nutshell. I mounted a handle up here because these things get a little heavy, but it, it's just easier to drag it around with and, and uh, lift it. So again, wish everyone good luck with your project. Uh, thanks for watching and feel free to comment. Have a great day.